couple of weeks ago, I made this picture with photos Chelsea took stacking this turn, a bird that was uh, flying down to catch a fish from the water. As part of my effort to convey action in still photography to kind of blend my experience with video and stills, uh, here's another take on that same image that I did. This is just zoomed in one to one, but you can see the progression of shots as the bird's flying and then dives down and sort of accelerates and then bam, hits the water. Oh, this is not the final version. I cleaned this up. I must have grabbed the wrong file, but you get the idea. So let me walk you through this full process, which actually took me several hours to do. And um, I'll check the description below and you can actually access these files if you feel like playing with Chelsea's files, but maybe you want to do it with your own files. That's probably a little more creative. The first thing I did is I loaded all these pictures into Lightroom as I normally would, but this part doesn't really matter. You don't have to have it in Lightroom because we're not really going to do much work in Lightroom. The one thing I would suggest doing before you move on to the next step is making any adjustments to the exposure, getting it as close as possible. Um, so we might adjust all these exactly the same. You could do this with any action sequence. If you are using Lightroom, you'd want the exposure to be the same, and that's really easy to do. Lightroom has this option, which is photo, develop settings, and then match total exposures. That way, in case the exposure changed during the course of shooting, you wouldn't end up with part of the picture that's brighter than the other part. So with this done, you want to export these pictures as JPEG if you're following my process. So for me in Lightroom, that's going to be Control Shift E, and then you export them to some folder. I've done this for you already. I'm going to do the cooking show thing where they like pull out the finished product <laughs> just to make everything go along a little bit faster. Uh, so as I jump over into Explore here, you can see my JPEG images here, this whole progression of 23 pictures from the first of the bird flying all the time, all the way until it hits the water. We're going to take these images and make them into a panorama. This is going to form the background of our picture. We're then going to isolate the bird from each of the individual pictures and lay them on the background. This gets pretty detached from any of the original photos. However, I feel like it's the best way to really convey what did happen out there. So to make the background into a panorama, I'm using a tool called Microsoft Ice. You can get it at sdp.io slash ice, and it's completely free. It's the best panorama tool I've ever found. Lightroom has a panorama tool built into it. I tried it for this, and it just completely failed. It just gave me an error. Um, if you're on a Mac, there are lots of Mac panorama tools. Unfortunately, I haven't checked them out. So inside of Microsoft Ice Image Composite Editor, I'll click New Panorama. And then I'm going to just go to my folder. Select all the pictures and open it. And the default settings here work just fine for me. On step two stitch, it's asking me just to straighten it. And because this particular picture has the horizon in it, it's really important that I get that level. Then I'll click next and it goes on to the crop stage. And for this, normally with a panorama, you might pull this in and get rid of all the jagged edges. Um, but for my purposes, I kind of want the background to be as big as possible. So I'm going to leave the jagged edges in there because they're easy to fill in with Photoshop later, especially with a simple background like this. So I'll click next and then just export this to the disk. I've done that already just to speed things up a little bit. This is what the finished product looks like. As you can see, it's nice and big. A couple of the bird pictures actually found their way in there, <laughs> but not all of them. So we still have to do the sort of hard part of getting the bird in the image in the places that we remember them being. How well this works is going to depend on the subject matter. If you were photographing um, somebody on a skateboard doing a jump and they had more complex backgrounds of trees or buildings or graffiti or something, that would be more for the panorama tool to align with and things might actually be easier. Here we have an almost completely blank sky and the water itself is so complex that it would be easy for a panorama tool to not line things up perfectly. So it 
this is playing on hard mode. <laughs> Yours is probably going to be easier than this. Now back into Lightroom, I'm just going to open these pictures up as layers in Photoshop. So edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. You could just be opening the files directly in GIMP, which is a free image editor that does a lot of the things that Photoshop does. I'm a Photoshop user, costs 10 bucks a month with Lightroom. So I think that's totally worthwhile. So I'll select all these layers and I'm going to drag them over to the background image and drop them on top. It's going to warn me about depths and stuff, but it'll, it'll adjust that for me automatically. Okay. Now I'm going to select all the layers and I'm going to go to edit and auto align layers. What this is going to do is it's going to give me a bit of a head start. It's going to take all my turn pictures and try to line them up with the background. This is not going to work great for me, but with your image, which might have a more complex background, it will probably do a pretty good job of getting all the images lined up. Now you can see the way my picture looks now is, is total, total nonsense. <laughs> This is totally like a late era Picasso, right? It doesn't make any sense at all, but we can see the background is back here. And if I peel away each one of these layers, we can see the bird is actually progressing and the bird really did hover in the air for a little bit. So as I peel away each one of these top layers, we can see the bird starting to dive. And see this image here is clearly not properly lined up because Photoshop's not great at auto align layers. This is the first image that happens to have a horizon in it. So what I can do is uh, grab a hold of this layer and just try to align it myself manually. I'm gonna hit Control T to transform it and that will allow me to rotate it a little bit. Um, so it's a head start, but it's, it's never going to be perfect in this case. Like I said, your background is probably going to be a lot easier than this. So as I peel away the next layer, okay, so here it correctly lined up the horizon and we can see these are actually looking pretty good. And as I flip through these layers, you get a real sense for the velocity of the bird, right? Because this is shot with the A9, which shoots at 20 frames per second. So Look at the difference in the altitude at 1 20th of a second. This bird is accelerating so fast. And that's why I wanted to make this picture because uh, Chelsea and Justin and I were all uh, working on, we're all sitting here watching this bird and it was astounding how fast this bird hit the water. So you can see this last image was just in completely the wrong place. So there's some of this where I'm just kind of manually reorganizing these and these aren't gonna be perfect. Um, and in fact, just given the complexity of the background, I probably didn't nail it in my final image. But so here you can see this particular image as we zoom in is the one where the bird's actually hitting the water. He's partially submerged. Oh, okay, so here we're seeing the background as we zoom back. Okay. This is actually the final image where the it's just the splash of the bird. So we have these sort of lined up and that's a head start for us. Um, well, let's start with the last image first. What I'm going to do is to use just the interesting part of this image. I'm going to be getting rid of everything in the background because our layer zero here is the actual background. It's this thing. Let's first clean up the background a little bit because this is easy. I'm going to hit W to open up the wand tool and you know what, I'm gonna use the quick selection tool. And I'm going to select all these areas of the background up here. I'm just selecting everything that wasn't automatically filled in. And then this usually helps select, modify, and expand. And I'm just gonna expand it by like 10 pixels. And then edit, fill, Content aware, select it, and I'll click OK. And so now Photoshop is going to go in and just take a wild guess at what the background should be. But usually it does a pretty good job, and you can see it did a pretty good job there. I can do a little bit more of this to fill in the outside. And 
this is more background than I will really need, but it's easy to go back and crop later. So if you just use content aware fill and have it make up some background for you, you're probably going to be cropping it out. So it doesn't need to be perfect. Now I can go back in and, you know, fix any little flaws that happen through this sort of artificial intelligence generation. Okay. So now I have a nice big palette to work with. That's good. I can pair it back later, starting with the last picture. First, I see this splash here and I might be able to actually line this up with the waves. So I'm going to select this layer and set the opacity down to like 50% or so. And then I'm going to zoom in. This is something you're going to end up doing on every picture. You're going to try to uh, make sure that it's properly aligned with the background. And so as I move it around, just zooming back a little bit to try to get it lined up with the waves. Oh, this is so hard. Okay, well, it might not be perfect, but I'm going to pick a spot in the image where I want the impact with the water to be. And let's say it's there. I'll set the opacity back up to 100%. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the Alt key and then hit this new layer button here. So I'm going to hit that and that's going to make a new layer here. It's all black, which means everything is hidden for that layer. Anything that's white in the layer will be shown. So now I'm going to grab my brush tool, set the color to white over here, and just paint in the layer mask. And that brought in the splash. I just happen to remember where it is. Um, so for, for the sake of kind of working on this big project in layers, I'm hitting the X key to switch between black and white. And I'm just kind of painting in a little bit of it here so we have some idea of where the splash is and I'm not going to try to get the background perfect now and so what I'm going to do is just move on to the next picture again I'm going to have to manually line this up because it didn't work well but I'll set the opacity of this down a little bit so I can see through it and then I know that splash happens at about the same point as the previous image so I'm doing that Once again, I'll make a blank layer mask and then hit the X key to paint with a white brush, B, and then make sure that's white. And then I'll just paint that layer in here. Um, those two layers kind of overlap. That's an unusual aspect of, of these two layers. And I'm just going to rough it the selection in. And then on this layer here, I'm going to repeat the process again. Hold down the Alt key, press the Layer key. Now I have a black layer. Select a white brush, and let's just rough it in. Let's show the next layer. And I'm going to kind of pick a position for the bird. OK, so you can see this process that I'm going through, aligning each layer, creating a mask that roughly shows the bird on the pre-existing background. Um, so now my task is going to be to mask each of these birds better because I just use a really rough mask. And generally the easiest way to do that is to use the quick selection tool and get in here and just kind of do your best to mask your subject, whatever that subject is. Um, if it goes over, as it did here, this is a really hard thing to mask. I'm going to hold on the Alt key and just go back over it like this. And to do a little more automated refining, I can hit the Select and Mask tool here. And I'll usually tweak the Smart Radius a little bit. Let's see, let's get a little more here. You can just paint in here to tell it, oh, you forgot this part. This part shouldn't be in there. 
we want their bill in there and then click OK. I outputted that to a selection, but I can always just go in and uh, paint in the layer mask with black. And um, selections suck. It can be really time consuming. And it's a big process of going in with a brush and painting in black around the edges of the subject, painting in white over where your subject is, and then just getting it as uh, close to perfect as you can. And that's why it took me a couple of hours to do all these images. But at the same time, it wasn't an image I'd ever really seen before. And so it was. I thought it was something worthwhile, especially for the the story that it told about the wildlife, um, their behavior, and the easy way that it conveyed it. So I repeated this process until it was completely done. And then I actually decided to present it in a couple of different formats. I had this larger format that I'm planning to make a big print out of. Um, you know, if I can make this, say, a six foot tall print, I think it will do a lot to kind of convey the velocity and behavior of these animals to people who might see it. But for the sake of sharing on Instagram, I made this version here that was a smaller format and could better show the behavior on a small screen. You can see how my final layers ended up looking. I actually combined those last two images to sort of short show the splash as well as the wings of the bird. And in the larger format here, you can see all these different layers. <laughs> I, you'll probably have to take multiple different sessions. This particular example got so large because I was working with the raw files and um, it got so big I couldn't save it as a regular TIFF file, but I had to save it as a PSB file, which is this other format that's like a PSD file. It contains layers, but it can get to be really big. Okay. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, I'm going to keep working with this process. I wanted to kind of show you the fundamentals. You can do this if you've ever shot action. It can be sports. It can be wildlife. Give this a shot. Go back to your old pictures and try stacking them. If you want to know, know more, check out my book on Lightroom and my book on Photoshop because that will teach you the fundamentals, what all these layers and brushes and masks are. That stuff you really need to know before we can start to get creative and use these tools to better further your expression. Of course, subscribe for more great tutorials. Bye.